All right, so I, I want to start off by thanking everybody for coming. This is our first annual uh, Southern California Public Sector IT Forum. My name is Adam Robinson. I'm the Chief Executive Officer for GovPlace. Uh, we're a public sector uh, exclusive enterprise IT solutions provider. Um, so we've been in this business for 15 years, and to the best of my knowledge, I think we're kind of a unique animal here in Southern California. Um, working, working exclusively with the public sector to build this kind of solution. And 15 years is a long time. Okay? In, that, in that time, I've seen a lot of things come and go. Uh, we've seen a lot of trends, uh, economic trends and political trends. Uh, we, we saw the uh, telecom boom and the dot-com boom and the real estate boom. And then we've seen kind of the associated downturns in the economy with that and how we work through all of that. We've seen the tragedy of 9-11. Um, and in that time, we often hit speed bumps. And I always get a kick out of watching the press in times like that. You know, we've got a, uh, the press always plays chicken little. You know, oh, the sky is falling because we're having trouble getting the Sacramento budget passed or uh, having trouble, uh, you know, one of our counties is having troubles going through and making their budget work. Um, I spend a lot of time tracking the, the budget and the political system and it feels like what's happened over the course of the last 18 months is different. It's different in some really fundamental ways from I think anything that we've seen in the past. What we're seeing today is changes on a scale that, that we haven't seen, certainly I think in any of our lifetimes, where we're experiencing threats not just from one or two directions, not just from a downturn in a particular market segment or a challenge associated with a particular political situation. But the way that I see it, we've really got th four specific threat vectors that we're, we're, having to, we're having to work through. Number one, incomes are down. Uh, across California, um, they, they do a survey of incomes, and for the first time since 1938, average incomes in California are down year over year. First time since 1938. We're seeing unemployment numbers in the double digits, uh, double digits in the fir for the first time in many, many years. Um, and, and I see a number of drivers for this thing. Southern California was the, su the epicenter for the subprime boom. Uh, we're also sort of the center of the world when it comes to real estate. And there's a lot of collateral damage from the collapse in the finance and the, uh, in the, in the finance industry that's hit us. And so we've had these core pillars of our economy that have crumbled, and then all of the associated services that feed back into those core pillars have now been hit as well uh, as we've worked our way through that. So there's kind of this domino effect that's had a net income, uh, had a serious impact on income tax. Uh, the second, second thing that's hit us uh, is spending. So we're seeing spending down, and that's not only driven by the reduction in uh, uh, disposable income that people have, but it's also driven by the reduction in housing prices. For the last seven or eight years, we've seen housing prices go up and up, and then the, the, the lending has been very loose. So people have done these cash-out refis and bought all of these wonderful sales tax-intensive things like cars and boats, which have helped to feed our coffers and helped us go through and grow, uh, grow our public sector practices. With the collapse of the housing market, people are not feeling wealthy any longer. Even folks that have the money are looking and seeing sometimes they're hundreds of thousands of dollars upside down on their homes. So they're hoarding their cash, keeping their money in the bank, choosing not to go through and spend it. So this has a simultaneous effect on us where we're seeing uh, revenues down in the public sector and at the same time we're seeing more people fall back on the services that we provide social services, health care services, the demand for those services goes up in a time like this. So we're kind of stuck in this paradox. Which brings us to the third threat vector, which is liquidity. So with uh, what's happened in the banking industry, we have seen a uh, major pullback in liquidity and uh, lending. And so this impacts us in a couple of ways. First of all, it's harder for businesses to expand. But secondly, the public sector spends, uh, the public sector has significant uh, uh, reliance on uh, the lending community to go through and cover the lumps and bumps in the way that we go through and get revenue in the public sector. So what happens now is when our bond rating deteriorates uh, and the lending community pulls back, it becomes more difficult and more expensive for us to go through to borrow to cover those gaps. Um, so all of this has the impact of reducing the amount of cash that we have available to be able to fund operations at the same time the requirements on those operations is going up. And then we have our fourth threat vector, which is what's going on up in Sacramento right now. So Sacramento has a $25 billion budget shortfall. This is on top of the $42 billion budget shortfall that we bridged just three months ago. So this is a, you know, Sacramento is a giant animal that is working hard to figure out how to go through and cover this, and there are no easy answers in the process. One of the things that they're considering is a $2 billion borrow from state and local government. 
So this would take, and I just I want to point this out because I think it points out just the staggering scale of the challenge that we're working our way through. Two billion dollars would take millions of dollars from the budgets of all the state and local agencies. And they can do this. I mean, it's a borrow. They're going to have to pay it back over three years, and they're going to have to pay interest. But even that millions of dollars worth of impact is going to solve less than 10% of the overall budget shortfall that's going on up in Sacramento. So we're going to see services cut, and we're going to see Sacramento have to work their way through that kind of a challenge. I was talking to John, John Fullenweider uh, b before the presentation, and he shared an analogy with me that I wanted to share with you, which is this is the most significant threat to the public sector, the most significant challenge that we've had to work our way through really in any of our lifetimes. And what has to happen is we need to drive change inside of our organizations, change inside of how we go about approaching this market to respond to that threat on the scale. And the analogy is this. Imagine if you guys were on a, uh, an oil derrick in the North Sea, and there's a storm raging, and you wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning, and your, your arms are blaring, and you walk out the door, and there's a big fire to your right, and there's a big fire to your left, and you turn around behind you, and there's a giant fire in the place that you came from. And you're stuck with a decision. Two in the morning, North Sea, bitter cold. When do you jump? When does the place that you're at become so unstable that the dark void below you is more, is, uh, is more appealing and, and, and jump out there? Now, I watched Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, address on Monday. And, uh, and, and he, gave a, he gave, I thought, a great analogy. It was from Winston Churchill. He said, uh, there are optimists and there are pessimists in this world. And pessimists see the challenge in every opportunity. But optimists see the opportunity in every challenge. Now, I am an entrepreneur, and we are sort of an optimistic lot. And so I'm looking at this on the outside, and I'm saying, friends, this is the greatest opportunity that we're likely to see in our lifetimes in public sector IT. This is the opportunity for us to drive change, and not little change, not incremental change, but big, sweeping, extraordinary changes that can go through and wipe away a lot of the basic structural challenges that we've all struggled with for years and years. Um, let's see, now I lost my place in my program here. There we go. Um, so this is an opportunity for us to go in and question our assumptions and open ourselves up to new ideas. And this is a wonderful time to be doing this because there are all sorts of new, interesting, innovative technologies and approaches and solutions that are out on the market that have been cooking for the last two or three years that have now reached a level of operational maturity that we can really go through and look at how those things could impact the fundamentals of the way that we function. These are game-changing things like cloud computing, uh, services-oriented architecture, software as a service, shared services, managed services, infrastructure as a service. And the game is changing in terms of how we, we interact with one another. We in the vendor community have historically sold government solutions. So we come in and do our dog and pony show and convince you guys that our solution is the best. You guys buy it. And maybe we have somebody come out and help you implement it. But at the end of the day, you're taking all the risk. You know, our, our job is done once the PO is fulfilled. We're seeing fundamental changes in the industry, approaches inside of our most innovative customers where we're coming in and partnering with them not to deliver a product, but partnering with them to deliver the end service to their end user, where we're collaboratively signing up to them. We're putting our name on the line, putting skin in the game, taking risk, and saying, we're going to help you deliver your service to your end user. Um, and this is happening today, all around us. And it's the kind of ground up rethinking that we need to be looking at and considering in order to go through and get ourselves, in, not only get ourselves through this crisis, but find ourselves in a much better place once we get to the far side of it. So, guys, you know, let's not kid ourselves. We're not talking about a trivial project here. We're talking about really nothing short of a fundamental rethinking of how government IT functions. So that's why we're here. That's why we put this conference on today. That's why we've invited you guys to come. That's why we have our, our, all of our speakers here, because we're all in the same boat, uh, and we all need each other. And this problem, this crisis that we're in, cannot be solved by any one act of government, no matter how bold and no matter how sweeping, can't be done. And it cannot be solved by any one technology, no matter how innovative, no matter how, how, interesting, how interesting it is. We need each other, and we need this partnership in order to find the far side of this thing. So that's the agenda for today.